Welcome to D-Lab. This is part four and the final part for the S10 Precision Electronics Amplifier Update. In this video I'm going to remove the 6EU7 tube which is used as a preamp plus inverter and we're going to separate that function. So we're going to have a 12AX7 preamp and a 6AV6 inverter and then we'll put in some fender tone circuits so that this little guy will have that fender fidelity. That's what we're hoping for. Here we go. Now right, here's the plan. A little Precision Electronics S10 amp is going to be upgraded to a separate inverter and preamp tube rather than the one 6EU7 doing the job of both. So I'm going to remove this tube and now it's going to become a 12AX7 which will sit here and we'll have a new tube which is a 6AU6 and he, if I can get to stay there, he will reside in that position. So you have your preamp inverter feeding the output tubes. So this guy's going to turn into a 5 tube amp and it should really bring it to life. So bottom side, what we're going to have to do, this is the current position of the 6EU7. I'm going to remove all this. We're going to add another tube socket here for the 12AX7. And this socket will be replaced with a 7-pin socket that has the same diameter as the 9-pin for the inverter tube. So I'm going to shift this socket over here and then this new socket will end up there for the inverter. So yep, it's going to be a little bit of a tear up, but this amp's really going to benefit having the separate inverter and preamp section. So you might be thinking, what's the best way to approach it? Right here guys, clip it out, get it all out of the way, we'll land the new socket, put in new terminal boards, and rebuild it. Well there it is, a new tube lineup, 12AX7, 6AV6, 6PQ5s, and of course the rectifier tube. So now, we just got to get underside here and get her wired up. Update wiring with the separate inverter and preamp tube is complete. So the 6EU7 now is history, right? Now we have the 12AX7 preamp, and there's his supporting components. This is our 6AV6 inverter. These two caps are 0.047 microfarad that go to the grids of the output tubes. Up here is our tone pots, right? So we got volume, treble, and bass rather than that separate tone, and I eliminated that panning pot, all right? So I will have to relabel the controls. Now this circuit, the tone circuit and the inverter is kind of textbook Fender Princeton, all right? So you can look that up if you wanna make an addition like this to one of these amplifiers. I also added a output jack here for the speaker. It's just a quarter inch jack, and of course it's only eight ohm. So let's flip her top side and look at the new layout. All right, we'll start with the back of the amp. We're gonna use this quarter inch input that said mic as the guitar input. Here is a quarter inch output, which is eight ohm for the speaker. I still have some rust issues to take care of around that fuse holder, kind of strange. This tube here I replaced. Now it's an old Fisher 6V4, all right? And then our other tubes, we'll go up here, flip them around. Our new tubes are right there, the 12AX7, 6AV6. These guys stayed the same, those nice Sylvania 6PQ5s. And there is the new Fisher 6V4. And down at the base it says, made in Great Britain. So I'm sure it's probably a Mullard. Well, viewing this amp and looking at the tube lineup, you would think that's how it came. It really turned out sweet. Now what I need to do, of course, is relabel the controls, because this is now volume, treble, bass, and the power switch remains the same. Now, let's pop this job around the scope and take a look at the sine wave. All right, same test as before. I've got the audio generator. 
set up around 600 Hertz. D-Lab audio test set providing load, watt meter, and then there's an output. Comes over here to our scope so we can monitor the good old sine wave. So I got my tone control straight up. So this is treble and bass. Let's bring up the mic gain, take a look at the power. Easily exceeding 10 watts of power. That's good. Let's take a look now at the sine wave. Look at that. Nice, clean, symmetrical sine wave. Whereas before, we had some distortion, if you remember. Let me cut back to that segment of the video. Take a look at this. This is what the sine wave looked like before with the 6EU7 doing the job of the inverter plus the preamp. Now we have them separate. Once again, back to this amp. There she is, nice and clean. I'm playing my treble pot. See, everything's responding nicely. This is going to be a great amp. So it appears as though the little S10 amplifier is really coming to life. Looks like it's going to be a great amp for somebody. But during this process, there's not much of that original amp left besides the chassis, the power transformer, and maybe the switch, right? It was quite a tear up to get this thing modified. The next thing I need to do before I hook a guitar to it is get rid of the two prong plug, get a grounded type on it to reduce hum, and of course, increase safety. All right, here's the initial test of the little S10 amp using a guitar, because that is what I modified it for, right? So what I'll do is I'll play the tone controls, strum this guy, and we'll see what it sounds like. Tone straight up. In other words, bass and treble straight up. It's killing the bass. Bring the bass back up. Let's give it some trouble. Treble back. We'll crank her up now. Yep, it's got that Fender sound. Probably a combination of that silver tone output transformer and the new tone circuit has transformed this amp into something very usable. So keep that in mind. If you go to a swap meet and you pick up one of these little PA amps, it's not going to sound that great the way it was configured because it was more for hi-fi, phonograph, and microphone type use. Okay, This now has the right fidelity for tube amp operation with your guitar. And that's what D-Lab likes to do. So this is part four and the final part of the S10 amplifier retrofit. Hope you enjoyed it. It's what D-Lab likes to do. And I do this stuff for you guys. We'll see you again.